Down a bare hallway in a Minneapolis industrial building, behind a door with no name, is one of the sweetest secrets in Minnesota. I love chocolate. Yeah. I can eat chocolate all day. And he can. Colin Gasco owns his own chocolate company. Welcome to Rogue Chocolatier, possibly the smallest chocolate factory in the world, and maybe the best. Not to give myself too much credit, but definitely doing this on such a small scale and actually doing the whole process is extremely rare. So rare that Rogue is the only real maker of chocolate from the bean to the bar in Minnesota. And each of his bars is from a single source, so meaning is, the chocolate bean beans for each flavor so come from just one farm in one country. I have uh, some beans we get from a small uh, farm in the Dominican Republic, and there's another one from an estate in Madagascar. The actual process takes hours, beginning with those exotic beans. And we work directly with those farms in whichever case possible. We pay them premium prices, and then we do the whole process, including roasting, milling, um, tempering, molding, packaging, we do everything here. The result is just two flavors of bars at the moment. Samburano has a kind of citrus taste, among other flavors. Hispaniola is a smokier flavor. But Colin doesn't add any flavor to the chocolate. He just brings out what is already in the beans. The 24-year-old Massachusetts native is part chocolatier, part engineer, and part mechanic. The machines are as amazing as the chocolate. Colin could not afford hundreds of thousands of dollars for the machines he needed, if they even existed. They don't really make small-scale machinery. What I've done is I've sort of come together with some, with some machines which uh, mirror the function of a lot of the traditional machinery used in making chocolate and uh, modified other machines if there was nothing available. One machine he did buy was the Temperer. It's a kind of recycling chocolate fountain that keeps the chocolate in the crystalline state that Colin prefers and dispenses an exact dose of chocolate into each mold. And then this is a vibrating table. We'll just vibrate out the bubbles. The molds cool in another of Colin's jerry-rigged devices, and it's time to check the chocolate for a nice, shiny front and back. There's almost no bubbles. It has a nice, resounding snap, which means that it's all the uh, fats have uh, crystallized very nicely. That's the way a properly tempered chocolate bar should look. If you're a chocoholic like me, with all due respect to Hershey's and Nestle's and those guys, Collins chocolate is something else. It's not the kind of thing that you scarf down a whole bar at a time. With Collins chocolate, you break off a little piece and set it on your tongue and let it melt. Mm. And enjoy. Other than his website, there are only a few places where one can buy rogue chocolate. That includes specialty stores like the Kitchen Window in Uptown. Each chocolate is so unique. That's the, that's the really cool part about single origin chocolate, is that each one is so distinctive in flavor. And that's really what makes rogue chocolate so, so unique and fascinating. And constantly evolving and experimenting. Colin intends to eliminate the tiny bit of vanilla added to the chocolate. Only three chocolatiers in the world make chocolate with just beans and sugar. Rogue Chocolatier intends to be the fourth. Does that rogue name make some people think he's making chocolate for Sarah Palin? Well, actually, I, you know, I've, I've considered suing her because I came up with it first. But He's just kidding. Fine chocolate, after all, is a flavor for all parties. If it is true that the best things come in small packages, in this case, the sweetest things come from the smallest place. Alan Costantini, Carol of the News, Minneapolis.